introduce him formally. This is John Perry. This lovely man has done art for some 25 years before he moved back to Australia in 1968, when he was influenced quite a bit by Francis Brazon after finding out about Mahabala. And he learned art in New Zealand. And he's brought a wonderful art show to give us pictures of what he wants to um, share with us so that we might more deeply understand and feel what it is for him to do his best to represent Mehababa, the avatar of the age, in paint. Thank you, John, for joining us. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Uh, the thing is that I've been trying to uh, figure out um, how much talking to do, and I don't want to talk too much because you want to see all the imagery. So uh, I'll, it'll be, I'll give a, a, a brief um, telling of how I got to start painting my art. So that'll be brief and then I'll go on from there. Yeah, so where are we? We're, it's 1967 and we're in New Zealand. And um, um, yeah, I've got a large studio, probably about this size. And I'm painting large paintings. And um, um, I'm involved in the art scene now. And I've got um, doing a lot of drawings, uh, portraits, and exhibited a few of them. But I'm mainly working on these large paintings. Anyway, um, so that's all going nicely, and everyone thinks we're, you know, the cat's pajamas, myself and another young painter nearby. So we're uh, going along like that, and uh, then out of the blue, this is 60, June '67. Out of the blue, this guy turns up from London and he's got two bottles of uh, Santos LSD. So, well, you know, don't know anything about it. So, um, this friend of mine, we go, he, he made contact with the art scene, so we heard about him. So we went there and he, he poured some out for us on this lot. And next morning, this friend of mine thought we'll um, take this trip. So we did. And we, we, we live near the beach, and so we walk around the beach, and you know, the, the usual, everything's disintegrating and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so we come back in. I, he said, I'm going back to my studio, and I said, okay, well, I'm going back to mine. So I go back into the studio, and I walk in, you know, and I'm looking around, and I go over where all the paintings are, and I go, what? What? And I was absolutely disgusted, you know, and I was going, this is just crap, you know. And I was, you know, but it wasn't only the imagery, it was the, you know, in that sort of uh, state, um, it was the motive and all of that, all of the mental stuff that went into it all, you know. I said, this is just crap. <laughs> and um, so, you know, I was, I was absolutely shocked, you know, to see how bad they were, you know. And uh, so, um, what happened? Next day, I see. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. The next day. Can you hear? Yeah. The next. The next day, I, I, I spot my friend. You know, and uh, he said, uh, "I said, how's it going?" He said, "Oh, terrible." And he had the same experience with his stuff. You know, and we both stopped painting. You know, and uh, so what happened then? Oh yeah, yeah. So just about then, LSD became illegal. And all of our friends were getting busted. So we thought we'd get out of here. So we went back to Australia. So we go to Australia. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're. Um, oh, yeah, I've got a job in the gardens. You know, you, in those days you could front up and, uh, you know, gut, well, when I say garden, you know, like raking leaves and that sort of shit. But the. Um, <laughs> the um, so anyway, um, what happens? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm there and I'm a hippie sort of guy and there's another hippie guy who walks along and we get chatting, you know. And uh, so uh, we're talking and that and he says, um, oh, 
He, something came up about art. He said, are you interested in art? I said, yeah. He said, oh, there's an exhibition on tonight. I said, oh, great. So he told me where it was. So I went along there. And um, he wasn't there, so I didn't know anyone. But they served lots of wine. So <laughs> you didn't have a few wines. <laughs> and uh, so after a while, I got talking to a guy there, a style hippie. And uh, I didn't know him, but we got talking. And he said, uh, Something must have come up. Uh, he's a, he was an artist also, and we had similar interests. Anyway, um, oh yeah, he says, something came up about alchemy, and he said, oh, I know an alchemist. And I said, oh, do you? And he said, why don't you come over for dinner? So I went over for dinner. And, uh, and the, the alchemist, so-called alchemist, was um, Ozzy Hall and Betty Hall were there, and Paul and Ann Smith, you know, like, so, um, like, you know, they're Barbara people. I didn't know any, you know, I'd heard about Barbara briefly, but I didn't know. Anyway, so we had a good night, and then Ozzy said, uh, you must come over, when you're going to Sydney? I said, yeah, we're going to Sydney in a couple of weeks. He said, come over next Saturday night. So we went over there to dinner. And um, so we went over there for dinner, and I'm sitting on this couch, you know, and he, and I'm looking up, and there's a, a painting of Maya Barber and another one. And I said, is that that uh, Maya Barber guy? He said, yeah, yeah. That's right. He said, I made that couch for him there that you're sitting on when he came here. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> but Ozzy, Ozzy was one of those guys, for new guys, was, took the low-key approach. He didn't say anything, right? So I'm saying, you know, anyway, um, and Ozzy's place, you know what Ozzy's place was like? 5.30 a.m. finish, you know, like dawn, you know. They're serious parties, you know. Anyway, um, so we're going, we're going out the door. And he said, um, uh, by the way, uh, you might be interested in this book. And, uh, oh, okay, thanks. So we go, and it's, it was um, that Purdon book, God to Man and Man to God. The, the condensed discourses, you know, a little bit. So I took that and uh, we went to Sydney, we went to a place out of Sydney, and um, I read this book and I went, oh, this guy is serious. He's seriously good. Anyway, I read it over and over again. And then I thought, well, this is it. He's the one that's worth. Uh, concentrating on and painting him as a subject matter. So, so then I, uh, we were in Terrigal, we, we rented a place in Terrigal. And uh, so uh, I started painting um, like drawings and oh, we went to Maya House and got a lot more books. And uh, so I had some images. So I was drawing them and that, you know, I wasn't happy with that. So then I just had a low table and I uh, cut up a lot of, you know, bits of paper about that big and I had some liquid text, um, acrylic, you know, me and the paint. And so I started, you know, working like this and uh, painting, you know, but it wasn't going too well. And uh, anyway, uh, so I kept persevering and then I was just trying to bring Barbara's image on the, the canvas, you know. and. Uh, so, oh yeah, yeah. So, and then because they're on paper and water, you, you, you flop them on the floor because they'll, you know. So anyway, next day I came in and I spot this one and I go, geez, that's not too bad. And uh, so uh, I thought, well, this is the start. This is good. That's, that, this, that's this one, the first one. That one. And so, uh, yeah, so that's the image. And um, what happened there? Let's check around. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, um, about this stage, Maria becomes pregnant. And so she's in New Zealand, so we decide we'll go back to New Zealand to have a baby. And so um, we go back to New Zealand, and then, uh, yeah, so I've got to get a job. So uh, just then, an old friend, she bumps into an old friend from art school, and he, he, he said, what have you been doing? And uh, he said, I've been a caretaker for this millionaire guy. 
in the Bay of Islands and I'm leaving and we said, oh, great. So I went for the interview and we got the job. So we were on the island for a couple of years and then um, I, I thought we've got to get back to town. So I applied for a job at the art gallery and an art gallery and I got the job and, uh, and then I moved to Auckland Art Gallery in the exhibitions department there and that job entailed um, going to Australia a few times, organising exhibitions. So, what happened? Oh yeah, and so in doing that I could drop in and see Francis, you know, and so I would do that quite, you know, whenever I went over there. And he was good, but he'd give you a hard time though, you know, he wouldn't take any crap on you, you know. <laughs> yeah, especially, particularly if you're a young know-it-all artist, you know, telling him what it's about, you know. He would know, pick you up pretty quick, you know. I remember I said once, yeah, well, Francis, it'd be nice if we, um, if, if, you know, you could, you know, whatever you were painting, if you could see God in that, you know. And he looked at me and, well, it's a bit like X, Y, Z instead of A, B, C, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You're not a six-planer, straight away. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, what happened next? Oh yeah, so uh, he, oh, he was good because he, you know, he was a. Uh, I'm very much. I won't go there now. No, I've got my back a bit. No, not the next one. Sorry. Uh, oh yeah, one story. The one, I, oh, when I used to come over, sometimes I, I was still painting, but you know, you really need a block of time to develop something, you know. You can't, you know, just do a few things now and again if you've got a job, you know. Which I did, but they weren't that good. And uh, anyway, I'd take him over uh, what I was, photos of what I was working on. And, you know, he was good, he'd give me, you know. Um, anyway, uh, you know, what was that? yeah. So, oh yeah, I'm showing a few photos to him, and uh, yeah, yeah. And then I showed him a couple of sketches, and one of them was Barber with his hand up like that, and you know, and you know, I'm moving on, and and Francis is everything's quiet. And I go, what's going on? I turn around, and Francis has got tears coming. Anyway, I'm, I'm going. Well, did I miss something? What's happening? Here? I didn't say that. I'm thinking, that. Well, what's going on here? You know, and uh, he said. This is how Barbara used to wave goodbye to us, like that, you know. It, it, in, it brought the, that memory to me, you know, even though it wasn't a, The painting wasn't good, but it triggered a memory. You know. Like uh, Krim Swami, you know, the great historian, uh, said, you know, works of art are reminders, you know. You know. And he also said, what, one painting, he, he was the curator of that museum in Boston, with all that um, Eastern stuff and all that, you know. And he said, well, really, all these paintings are about God, which we never speak of in polite company. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but he was, his books are good. Who was wrong? Um, you know, uh, Francis. You sort of lost track of that. Uh, Francis. You're going back to Australia. Back and forth from... Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we did that. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, did we? So you, you haven't you loved go, New Zealand. You're in the Bay of Islands and you're going back yeah. and forward. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, my Francis is painted. Yeah, next one. <laughs> Francis also painted uh, when he was young. In nine, this is a painting of his in 1941. And he used to hang out with Sidney Nolan and Arthur Boyd and all those heavy hitters of the Australian, who turned out to be key Australian artists, you know, some people won't know that, but um, but he, you know, he lived in a rooming house with Nolan, he was in one room and Nolan was in the other, you know, but, you know, like, and Francis, um, uh, he did, he had an exhibition, this is from his first ex uh, group exhibition they had at the um, Contemporary uh, Art Society, and Nolan and all of them had paintings in it, and Francis had four paintings, this one was called Portrait of a Self-Realized Soul. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and uh, so he had, he had three other paintings in it, and uh, what happened? Yeah, and uh, 
This were dearer than Nolan, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but this one was not for sale. But anyway, um, so, so yeah, so Francis was a really good um, uh, to talk to, you know, about painting and that. And uh, I showed him a book once of um, a really good painter, Colin McCann's, a um, uh, New Zealand painter, who uh, used to do a lot of religious subject matter, but this particular book was um, abstract stuff, you know. And he looked through the book and said, uh, yeah, interesting shapes, aren't they? You know, basically putting it down. <laughs> Francis said he liked painting, but he couldn't express himself with that medium. So he switched to words and poetry, you know. And another a little story, uh, I was talking, we were talking this discussion about art and all that, you know, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and I said, yeah, we're trying to get to the nitty-gritty, to really get down to the nitty-gritty and cut out a lot of periphery stuff and just concentrate on the barber. And he said, yeah, well, that's what I'm doing. Here, have a look at this. And he showed me uh, the, the poem, Him to God the Man. And uh, that was his uh, take on getting down to the nitty-gritty. <laughs> I'm working in these galleries, and uh, um, then I start up a framing business and doing work for art galleries. Uh, and that gave me a bit more time. And now it's a few years later, 1981, and I've got a block of time. So I start uh, paint, doing a lot more painting. And so I um, have this exhibition of uh, paintings that are related to Barber. Um, the next one, yeah, thanks. That's the, and I call it I to I. Uh, and we'll go to the next one. And, and this is one of uh, them. But I, I was trying to paint Barber, uh, you know, and, and you know how if you look at the person next to you or whatever, and you can see the point of the eye comes like that, and this chin comes around like that. Well, as I was trying to paint Barber, this bird shape kept coming, you know. And I, every time I kept scrubbing it out, it kept coming, and I thought, oh, I'll stop it, I'll just go with it. <laughs> and, uh, so I, uh, I just went with it, you know. And, uh, and uh, this was one of the better ones. And uh, so, yeah, we can move on. Yeah, and that's another. And then, and that one. And then. So, you know, I did get a bit carried away, you know. <laughs> and, uh, I, I like the, the image of a bicycle, so I threw a bicycle in every now and again. <laughs> and, yeah, the next one, yeah. Oh, that's another one. And, uh, you know, so, like, they just did variations on that uh, image, you know. And that's another. And this one, in the same show, I had a few aspects of Barber's life, um, with not the birds. So this one's Barber meeting Barber John under a tree, you know, sort of thing. And uh, yeah, like, like, that's quite a big one. It's probably about six foot by four foot. Um, so yeah, aspects of Barber's life were brought into it. Um, and, yeah. oh, and this is the exhibition in the um, gallery, you know, an installation shop. Some of them are smaller and some bigger, you know. And, we can go to the next. Okay. and that's another. Oh, and that large one was, um, you know, Barbara, medium Barbara, and so What was the gallery? Sorry? What was Which the gallery? Uh, a dealer gallery in uh, Auckland, RKS Gallery. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's quite a good gallery. And, uh, yeah, and uh, I actually sold a few. And surprisingly, that one under the uh, Merwin meeting Barbajan under the tree, some guy bought me, no, nothing to do with Barbara, you know. I was just thought I was like it. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Oh, now, uh, this is a few years later, and um, what happened? Yeah, so I like the uh, plain colour, and I was working on high key colour. But when I tried to draw images on the uh, 
thing, and they, they'd all got dirty. So I had to figure out a way to... And I remembered two things. I remember seeing a, a, a Buddhist um, uh, thing where the sculpture, and then behind it they had all of these beautiful um, drawings of the Buddha and that, incised into the metal. And I thought, well, that's good. And also, you know, the kids, they have the, um, the little pads and they can draw on them and, and then smooth it over and that. And I remember that. So what I did was I painted underneath, uh, like, say, the left-hand side one, I'd paint blue under there, and the other one I might have orange or whatever. And then I'd paint the surface with a thick layer of oil paint. Uh, and then I had a stick and I'd draw into it, you know, like this. Uh, and, and if it didn't work, you'd just get a palette knife and smooth it out. Uh, and you had about two days before it dried. So it made you very spontaneous. And uh, I think we can move on to the next one. Oh, that's um, yeah. And so the scratch through, there's another image there. You can't see it too well on that. And that one. And so basically the show was about the different avatars, like Muhammad, um, Krishna, and yeah, we knew. And that one, we had, yeah, next. And that one, and Jesus and that, you know. So, and I just scratch into them. Uh, smooth over and, yeah. And this one, oh, Muhammad and Jesus and that uh, one. So, different color underneath. And you put the top colour on and, it, you know, if you made a mistake, you smooth it out, you know. And uh, if you fill it around too long, well, it dried, they had the dump. So, yeah, so that's that. Oh, and that was one. Yeah, that was a bit of a one. My fixation with bicycles and names. But, um, yeah, so, like, and not like the cycles, you know, the cycle, whatever and whatever. And, uh, yeah, so... And that's the installation, uh, again, of the show. In, uh, the next one. Yeah. So, and, yeah, some are smaller and some are oh, this one is later on. Uh, this is called Steps to His Feet. And, uh, you know, Sam, okay. I did a few with sand and stuff. Um, yeah. And this is another one. It's um, painted underneath with a sort of a, a, a jade blue and then scratched into it. And it's sort of that business about illusion and reality. You know, Barbara's there, there all the other images, and then Barbara's the one behind the reality, behind the uh, illusion, you know. And then and this is another in that vein, that's quite a large one. And uh, illusion and reality sort of thing. Yeah. And that's another one, of, uh, that's a study for that type of thing. You know. oh, and this is a small, spontaneous one of Barbara walking on Myrtle Beach, you know, just sort of uh, scratch through. I did a few of them, but this one worked quite well because it was that transparent thing. Um, you know. yeah. And this one is, um, yeah, the face, um, Baba, blue. Um, yeah. Oh, and this one, this was, um, I, I was here years ago and I wake up, woke, no, I didn't wake up, I had a dream in the middle of the night and above the Samadhi there was this huge sabra in the sky, huge. And, 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 and going across it, the top part of it, was a film with all these crowns on it. And down below the bottom part, there was this film going across with these feet. Well, I didn't have a clue what it meant, but I, I liked the image, so I did some painting. I did two or three paintings of it, you know. So I don't know what it means, but, you know, it's, um, anyway. Um, that's another, uh, yeah, um, Thinking about a sort of thing, and that that one, I was doing a, uh, a face of Barbara, and it wasn't working out at all. 
So I cut the church rag and washed it all off. And I was doing something and I looked over and I thought, oh, that's not, not bad. So I put a little figure in there and I was quite happy with it. And that's another one. That, um, just the bird ones with the trees. So the upper avatars of both this fringe of honey tree, a big fringe of honey tree. And that's uh, something to do with that. Oh, on these, I did three of these. Um, Self explanatory of Jesus, um, Barbara, and Lord Krishna. And, you know, just under this tree, and I used the profile of like two people thinking or looking. And that's another version of that. But sometimes I like to do one, two or three versions. If, if one's not going too well, I can go back to the other one and keep working. And that's another one. It needs a bit of work on that one. Uh, and uh, that's that statement about laying that ancient one. And uh, so, uh, yeah, that's the third one of that, that series. Uh, this one is, um, it's just a composite. I didn't have that photo, but it's just a composite thing I'd like to do one with Barbara Erich and Francis in it. So, uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's about, you know, six foot by three or something. Um, this is quite a large one. It's about six foot six by about four foot six. Um, took a long time. But, um, you know, sorry, I do. You know, the five perfect masters and the dark heritage and they were on down that side, all the avatars, and then all the family members down there, you know, money and everyone, and then all of the Mongoli up the top there. Yeah. Uh, family tree. Sorry? The family tree. Family tree, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Uh, yeah, so, and then the Master's Prayer. I hope I'm going to pray. Yeah, so, um, yeah. And that's a close up of the centre piece of it. Um, yeah. You get, doing that many faces, you get quite, quite good at your faces. Oh, and this is, um, we did, um, Paul Smith said that he wanted to do another uh, edition of Francis's book. And so he um, asked me, could I put a, a painting on the cover? So they picked this one, so I put that one on the cover. And, oh, that's a, an oil pastel idea of Francis. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, like greasy crayon, but like a better uh, quality one, you know. Thank God. And uh, it's quite weird, because uh, I was under a bit of pressure, because they wanted, when they said, oh, well, uh, what about doing the cover? I said, yeah, sure, put it in. And then they said, um, well, what about some illustrations? Well, I had a few, but then I then there was a deadline, I had to do them, so I was doing lots of lots of drawings, you know, just for the Bible. I'm doing lots of drawings, and I did I did this one, I looked back on it later, and I thought, geez, that's a bit odd. How come I did a drawing like that with that hand there, you know? But I quite liked it. You know, that Barbara as the like doer of all, sort of, you know, I don't know. Anyway, so I put that in under the uh, chapter of God's Feast. So that's that. Oh, this is another painting uh, in John Wilkins' house. A long, and I bought all these doors. Uh, they had a, some place in Macro, and they had all these doors, but they didn't have any door knobs or anything, just blanks. So I bought all these doors because I hated scratching the canvases all the time. So I bought all these doors, and uh, also I quite like the uh, format of a, like a comic strip or a uh, uh, Buddhist manuscript. You know how they have those Buddhist manuscripts? You know this and that, something else, different scenes. So I, I started doing some like that. So this one uh, was one that I did in, in that area. You know. Uh, 
Oh, and that's a close up of it. And uh, Mara and Barbara. And that's another you know, detail. <clears throat> oh, and that's another one of the drawers with, um, you know, self explanation, really. And uh, the women getting it, uh, sort of thing. And that's another one that uh, uh, door again. Yeah. Oh, and these ones I did. Uh, this one's quite large. It's um, I think it's about four foot six by six foot six, and uh, on canvas. And um, Barbara and uh, as the Mark right. Um, yeah. So uh, and this is an, another door <coughs> where I cut in half. Uh, it's another one of those. Um, the last meeting, you know, when they had that, had that, had that last meeting. And this is another one, smaller one. And that's another one. That it's a bit of a rougher version. And this is another one of the peasant martyrs going to meet Barbara. Uh, And this one uh, is about, you know, like this big. And, uh, uh, let me think about it. Oh, yeah. Um, we, we were living in New Zealand, and uh, Barbara didn't come to New Zealand, so I thought I'll do a painting of Barbara and Eric in New Zealand, you know, the New Zealand landscape and all that. And then I wrote, I'd just come back from India, and Eric, where they were talking about, you know, where Barbara said, I have come not to teach but to awaken. And Eric said, Well, he didn't realize that to awaken myself in you. And that's a little quote. But, yeah. And that's another, that's on one of the other doors. Um, that's a tall, a life size, yeah, life size sort of painting Barbara. And this one, you know, when you're walking up to the Samadhi and the uh, You've got that shadow, in your, if you're wearing a hat, the shadow's in front of you. And when I came back from India, I had a photo that I took, and I, ah, oh. so I, I um, did a painting of that, man. and uh, steps to his feet. Just, can you hear there? Sorry. Yes. Can you hear? I'm not using the mic too long. Yeah, and this is, uh, what you anyway, that's, um, um, what I do, I do a few rough drawings, and then out of the rough drawings, one might mm -hmm. seem interesting or really good, and then I'd blow it up and make a um, painting of it if I thought it was worthwhile. So that's that one. Oh, this one, um, yeah. This, this curtain, uh, I was having trouble painting the curtain. And uh, on another painting, I tried another version, it didn't work. And then I remembered that stretch through technique. So I painted all the background, and then I painted that all uh, a, a dark grey, and then I used the old stick trick and just straight through it, and so you can see through, you know. And that's a, a large, that's quite a big painting. Uh, it's a large version of that type of idea. Of the, uh, you know, uh, father, you know, I have come, you know, sort of. And that's a, uh, a rose colored portrait. Uh, and that's another one, it's a bad photo, that one. It's, um, yeah. That's another uh, oil pastel. Um, the same oil pastel. Oh, this one is a big French painting tree up at Avatar's Vogue. And so I did a painting and, and uh, Barbajan and Pestinar. Uh, and that's another portrait. That's a bit washed out. It's a bit green, a bit greener and blurry than that. That's a, a oil pastel, quite a large ish one of Barba. And that is, um, uh, uh, you know, like, um, you know, just the alphabet or all over his side, you know. 
sort of, I mean, you know, when I speak with her, there's quote there. Um, there's a close up of it. John, do you think you could sit down? Because oh. it's a bit hard to see from this oh, side. Oh, sorry, you should have told me earlier. Me. Sorry about that. And that's a close up of that. <laughs> What's happening? Could you not yeah, see? Yeah, you start from the beginning. She's just <laughs> running the yeah. Is that true? You couldn't see? No, you haven't. We can see. Have we can watch them all again. Oh, and this is another. You should have told me earlier. You no, I, I should have. You're right. I'm so oh, this sorry. This is another one of. It's your fault. Microphone. This is another one of. Uh, <laughs> throwing this <laughs> down in. Um, yeah, so. That's that. Oh, I'm sorry about that. You didn't see. You should have told me. <laughs> um, um, yeah, so that is that, I think. Yeah. Oh, now, Maria, I've, I've included a few of Maria's paintings. Um, it was her birthday yesterday, so we thought we'd put a few of it. These are my wife's paintings. She did these paintings of large vessels, large cauldrons. Just a, a few to show. And that's another one. And that's another painting she did. And that's another one. And this is, you know how those cane cutters are, make little huts. And, uh, you know, when they, that's, she did a few paintings of those. Uh, for a trip here. Oh, this is uh, when we had her send off. We put one of her paintings at the end of the pool and uh, hung it there. So um, that's it. I think that's about all. I'm sorry that you didn't see. You shouldn't have seen it. We can see it all again. Go, we'll just run through it. Just have another go. You through. can roll through it again, we by all means, but I won't say anything. You'll just, yeah, go. Hello. Do a. A sprint for it. Yeah. John, while we're flashing through, there's a lot of other work that you've done. Yeah, I oh know. This is just a selection. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. There's other. There's other works, but these are just a selection. David had them on, on his little machine. So what does the bicycle symbolise to you? Oh, it, it, uh, I just like the image of it, but also it, it, the cycle, you know, uh, when you're relating to Jesus, uh, Muhammad, Baba, you know, the cycle, you know. And uh, Baba left the cycle when he met Baba John, you know. That's all really. See, I always put it in if I got a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a few there in the show that we didn't get to see. Yeah, I know. There's a lot that I didn't show. Yeah, sure. And I've got other ones that I, I should have, but I didn't have photos of them and stuff. Yeah. What are you working on now, John? What are you working? On? Oh, I'm working on a. Um, I've had a break. I haven't done anything for about a year, but I'm working on three or four paintings of uh, um, Baba. Bowing down to uh, Sai Baba and uh, and Sai Baba saying Parvatika. So I'm doing a lot of preparatory drawings and I've got three or four canvases underway, but they're not going too well. But when I go back, hopefully it'll get along better. Like mm. uh, yeah, well, it's strange how you, you get something, and that all comes from that walking up to Samadhi and yeah. having that hat on and yeah. seeing that shadow. You know? <coughs> mm. I love. I did a couple of those, and I should have done more, but. I, uh, yeah. 
you move on and uh, if you get another idea, you can't go back. Yeah. Well, sometimes you go back, but you know, normally you move on. And that was a chance one, you know, um, that I quite like. Do you have many left or are they all gone? I've got some, but my girls won't let me sell anymore because they're all gone. They're, people own all of these. I've got a few there. Yeah. Actually, I've got more than they can handle. Do you sell the productions on fineart.com? Do you sell reproductions anywhere? Like do you sell posters? reproductions anywhere? Like posters, reproductions? Sorry? Reproductions. No, posters. I don't. I'm not in. I don't like that idea of uh, reproducing. No. I don't like it. I don't mind drawings of that, but not that reproduction technique. I don't like it at all. John, do you still have um, contact with other artists? Oh, yeah. Time? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I know. I, okay. they, yeah, I have. And we, you know, we respect each other what we do, and, you know, and, uh, you know, they don't think I'm a nutter, but, you know, uh, <laughs> just because I'm still painting Maya Barber, but, you know, um, we respect each other. Like, I had a show in Sydney, and once I became specifically Maya Barber, the, the dealer, Ray Hughes, said, uh, John, I like them, but I can't sell that stuff. You know, it's like, this is years ago. Peter Moore makes two or three of these. <laughs> John Borthwick and Wendy have been terrific yeah. throughout the years. And if you look on the site, they own quite a lot. But it's but they, they have, when we're really short of money on that in the early years, they bought stuff and they've been terrific. They're like a patron, really. But also in their home. Yeah, they're oh, that's right. Part of the, the yeah, they're like a mini, of their mini gallery there, isn't mini it? Mini John Parry gallery. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I like going there, seeing them all. And it definitely lends to the atmosphere. I mean, it really yeah. yeah. And the little John, ones also have a few, don't they? Is that, is that a little bit like one of the ones that William Rogers plays? I'm sorry? sorry? Is that similar to the one that you get at William Rogers Hayes? With the curtain. One with the curtain. Um, I'm not sure. William Rogers Hayes? Um, it could be. Where's that one bathing the Olympus? It's not there. Didn't, we didn't put that in. Oh, yeah. No, there was one there at bathing the Olympus, but um, we must have missed it. <coughs> John, you're, you're now the curator for the works that are hung in Barber's house. And yes, place. that's right. Robert Rouse was doing it, and now I've been elevated to the curator status. <laughs> I might do another version of that. I only did one. I might do two or three. I quite like the idea of it. Hell of a lot of fooling around painting those numbers on, though. That's the only reason I haven't done it. <laughs> Often use acrylics. Are you mostly into oil paints or oil paint? Yeah. You, yeah. you don't use acrylics. Uh, on some, I, I don't. I don't mind. There's a an emulsion. Ray used to use this emulsion, and it's very good. It's nice and transparent. And uh, it, if you're living in Queensland, Queensland is the unbelievable bad place to have paintings. We've lost so many paintings up there. We used to use a, a wax medium in the oil paint. If you use the wax medium in the oil paint, and up in Queensland, that uh, humid weather, you get mold on them. Oh, we, 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 she lost six, I lost about seven paintings, and I, I just finished. And, uh, but if you, uh, acrylic doesn't affect them at all. And oil paint's all right, but if you use that wax medium, which is nice to use, but in Melbourne, there's no worry, you know, but up there, that humidity and hot weather, we like Myrtle Beach type area, you know, really bad for paintings. 
So, Why, John, is there any question? Any more, have you got any more um, stories about Francis Brabazon? Oh. Oh, I might, I might, yeah. This is that very first image. Did Francis really love that one of yours? Which one? The very first. The image. first one. I gave it to Francis. Yeah, he yeah. wrote me a, a really nice letter, and uh, yeah. and uh, he really liked it. Yeah, yeah. Look, I can't think of any at the moment, but he was very uh, supportive, you know, um, to do with your own work. But if you were showing him. I used to show him, you know, this painter or that painter, and basically put them all down, you know. And uh, uh, because, you know, uh, particularly anything abstract and all of that. Oh, thanks. Oh, thank you. Good. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Um, you know, because like now he, you know, uh, the God Man is the inhuman form, and forget the abstract stuff, you know. Uh, but um, what else, Francis? But he, he was very supportive, and uh, but he he still gave you a hard time. I remember one. I remember one story. Yeah, I, I was waffling on, you know, about uh, this uh, art theory or that artist and what was happening, you know, telling him how it is, you know. And uh, so um, he he said, "Hey, let's go for a walk." So we went for a walk down, and they were building a new house. I think it might have been Build the Pages or something, and. Uh, he said, hey, hey, have a look at this. And he, uh, you know, in the ditches, you know how they do that reinforcing, the steel reinforcing, you know, they wire it together. He said, hey, look at this. What a beautiful job they've done, you know. And he took me around, not only one area, you know, Lord, oh, have a look at this lot, you know. <laughs> Basically, you know, down, bring me down to earth a bit, you know. Forget all of the art theory and that, you know. Look at how good a job these workmen have done, you know, that type of thing, you know. Um, what else did he talk about? <coughs> oh, yeah, you know, one little story. Um, you know, there was a book came out. Oh, anyway, he said, hey, have you seen this? I said, what? And he got this book down, and it was um, The Triumphal Son, Emma, Maria Schimmel. Is that her name? Yeah. Maria Schimmel. Yeah. And Maria Animation. Yeah, that's it. And he pulled it down and uh, he um, said, have a look at this. And he went right to the back. And uh, in there, there was a, um, a, a critique of Stay With God. You know, like saying what a nice book, what a great epic poem it was and all that. He was tickled pink. And he, I was quite surprised, you know, that he would be so. But the thing was, it was probably the only time outside the barber scene that anyone had made any comment uh, about his uh, poetry at all, you know. Well, she was also a very, she was a very respected, well-known scholar. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. Was a, well, he was, uh, he was really pleased that, with that. Maybe a little more, uh, uh, say that again, a little louder for people. Yeah, yeah. Anna Marie Schimmel is a very, is a very well-known scholar of Sufism in Iran and India, and she talks about things like dance and different, different things. But she's, she's a. Uh, as a scholar, she had a real sympathy for mystical uh, kinds of works. So, but she was primarily focused on literature. So I don't know if she got involved in, oh yeah, Stay With God, of course, with literature. Yeah. Francis, did Francis encourage you? Yeah. In your oh, yeah. How? Oh, oh, how? Yeah. Well, he just, um, you know, I don't know. Well, when I sent him that painting, he sent me back quite a long letter, you know. Um, he said, he said, you know, what's it called? It was, the, yeah. that very good screen. He, put out he said it was very good. Out one and he green said, one um, yeah, and then he went on to say other stuff. And, but, um, my pity I don't have it. He said it was probably the first, uh, the first uh, real contemporary painting of Bob, something like that, and he went on. He really did like it. He said uh, to Roy, he captured the eyes of God. Did anyway. good print. But anyway, so, um, and so you had that series of eye and that eye picture, then you had all that series. Ah, that's right, that's right. But um, anyway, uh, 
No, he, he just encouraged, you know, um, if you're trying to do something new and that, and trying to depict Barbara in some new way, he would, he would uh, say, yeah, I like that, you know. And even though it wasn't like me, in retrospect, it wasn't that good, but he would encourage it, you know. And, uh, yeah, even though he'd give you a hard time on one level, but it went not to do with what you were you're painting or that, he wouldn't give you a hard time there, he wouldn't put you down there, you know. Just when you're waffling on. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Josh, you mentioned about uh, that Francis wasn't so keen about art uh, abstract. No. Um, and, uh, of course, also, the writer Kumarswami wasn't so no. keen on it either. No. Um, but I see, like, for me, I think one of the difficulties of creating good abstract art yeah. is we have Baba's in it. Yeah. So, do you ever get the action, like, say, why are you tampering with Baba's face? Or why? Yeah, well, you, you just. Don't know what I'm you no, I know what you mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. No, well, you, well, you know, the thing is, when you try to paint Baba, I mean, sometimes you go up alleyways, you know, and uh, you don't know where you're going sometimes. Um, and so, like those birds, you know, I mean, it just kept coming. And I, finally, I just said, I'll just do it, you know, and I did it, you know. But, um, um, so, you know, and like, you might do a whole, uh, quite a few paintings, and, you know, in retrospect, you might look back at them and say, well, they're not that good, really. That, you know, those weren't that good. But, you know, uh, when you're doing them, you're involved in them and all that. It's, you know, uh, Hey, who, who's going to paint Barbara? Anyone, you know? We're all just attempting to. No, no, you know, if you can paint him, you're there, you know? So we're just attempting it, you know? You know? Yeah, so, you know, it's an attempt to bring him to life on the canvas and, uh, you know, um, I don't know. Um, so you know, I, I, I personally, you know, I'd sooner sit down and put my feet up and watch the midday movie, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, a damn, it's a damn sight easier than trying to depict God, you know. You know. I'm sorry, I haven't got any more stories about that. I can't think of them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have been reluctant to include this letter, but friends have encouraged me to not worry about blowing my own trumpet. So here goes. It's from Francis, it's Avatar's abode, and it's 25th of July, 1975. Dear John, perhaps one could get away with it by saying that it is the best thing yet done. I'm referring to your painting, but best could mean merely the best of a poor lot. So I will come straight to the point and say, swear and declare that your portrait is the first original and contemporary one yet done. All praise to the beloved who has opened a door for you into the realm of his representation. Now, John, you must be very careful as I must also, as you by now have probably found out, real art is dependent upon real honesty. Barber stresses honesty in everything we do or say. In art and poetry, it means not making a brushstroke or putting down a word which one does not know. There can be no faking, no thinking, one can get away with it. And he hated faking and posing. One can fool oneself so easily. One may even fool everyone else for a time.
but one cannot fool him, for he knows who he is and judges whether each line and bit of colour is faithfully done. With much love, Francis. You will no doubt be glad to know that there was some new singing at the anniversary last month, Francis. That would be Sam Saunders and Rainey and the singers. 